Hey guys, well, it's Labor Day and I hope you're having a great one. Um, I got some of my chores done and now it's time for me to just go out in the woods and mess around. Today, what I want to try to do is I want to revisit a project that I had done, um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before or whatever, and that is making a container out of uh, birch bark. Now, it's not, you know, super hard or anything, I was able to do it. Um, but like any project, the more you do it, the better you get. And mine were pretty rough looking. Um, the one that I'm going to make today is probably going to be pretty rough looking too. But the difference is um, I want to try to make it waterproof. Now, um, I recently got back from a trip to the Apostle Islands in Wisconsin. That's way northern Wisconsin. And we took a ferry uh, ride over to an island and there was a museum there. And we, uh, inside the museum, was a lady making birch bark baskets. Um, and I talked to her for a while. Uh, she's uh, Ojibwe. And I talked to her for a while and she kind of made it <laughs> a point to tell me, you know, you can't be using dead bark. You can't use bark off a dead tree. Which is kind of a bummer because, um, you know, like any resource or any responsible person or whatever, you know, you try not to kill stuff just to kill it. Um, pine trees, oak trees, basswood trees, stuff like that. Um, a lot of the trees that are, well, I don't know about basswood, but anyway, the oaks and stuff like that that take a long time to grow, you don't just want to uh, cut down willy-nilly. Um, these aspen trees, I'll cut them down all day long because they're like weeds. They just pop up everywhere. And, uh, and I kind of feel um, reluctant to cut down a birch tree just for the bark, but, you know, I'll use it, I'll use it for a lot of stuff. I may, I'll, take the, I'll harvest that tree and, and use it for a lot of stuff. Don't do this on public land or don't, oh man. All right, so what I was saying is don't do this on public land. Make sure the trees are your trees um, or you have permission to harvest the tree, whatever, because it's gonna kill the tree more than likely. Uh, and you wouldn't want to do that out in, you know, on land that's not yours or if it's not your tree. Anyway, um, this is a basket that I made. Oops, still got the tag in it. All right, just kidding. This is a basket that I, um, that I purchased from that lady. And you can see she, she used um, basswood cordage to secure the basket. I mean, she just did a really nice job, but it's not waterproof. I mean, it's a beautiful basket, I love it, but it's not waterproof, like I said. And I actually talked to her and she's never made a waterproof basket. And she's, was, you know, after I got done talking to her, she's gonna try to make one. And she doesn't think it's gonna be that hard for her, but still, it's kind of, it was um, not really shocking, but I mean, I was surprised that she had never made a waterproof basket. And she, I asked her if she, you know, with the forming of this, if she used heat or water or anything like that, and she doesn't. She just kept on telling me, use a live tree. And the smaller, the better, she said. So, well, let's go out in the woods and, and give it a try. We'll, we'll harvest a tree and uh, take the bark off it and see what I can do. And if I am able to make it waterproof, then I want to try to boil water with it. So, all right, let's get going. Okay, well I just, right by my house, just saw this birch tree and I can hear the lady scolding me already that it needs to be live. But let's just check this out. I think there's some, I mean it hasn't been dead for that long. So let's check out the bark right there by the big, the big tree. The small one I just broke just to kind of check it out. I think I can use that small one for a different project. But let's, let's harvest this tree and peel some of the bark off and see what we got here. And actually, I probably won't even cut it. I mean, it's dead already, so let's just leave it standing here so it's not laying on the ground and rotten. Um, yeah, so here we go. This piece looks promising right here because it doesn't have all the little bug holes and stuff that I'm used to when I deal with really dead ones. Um, she also said that I need to get rid of this outer layer of bark, which I don't, need, I don't need to do right now, but I mean, it's something that she said is get rid of this outer layer stuff. So, all right, I'm just gonna go around the tree here.
wouldn't mind getting it all the way down here too. That'll give me plenty of opportunity to practice. Not especially difficult doing this, but I just want to be real careful. I mean, it's kind of awkward. Alright, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna go over this a few more times just to make sure I'm really getting a lot of it because I can see it's starting to separate. You got the outer bark, and then I'm thinking an inner bark will come loose too. Maybe not. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that inner stuff. Try to be safe so if I slip I don't <laughs> cut myself in the groin or something. cut both the top and the bottom and get back with you. Okay, so it's starting to separate here and you can see the outer part is uh, separating a little bit from the inner part. And you know, somebody who's a little more, I mean, I'm pretty familiar with birch trees, but not harvesting the bark like this and not being, you know, so super careful. Normally I just, you know, if it's a dead tree or something, I just rip it off because I'm using it for something like, you know, something different. But for a container, I want to be real careful and I don't know if I need to be this careful or what, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be pretty careful. So I'm just gonna work this down and uh, try to get it all off on one in one piece. And if I have to try to skin it, see it's gonna come off. It's just I don't want it to tear down there. It looks like it's coming pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to keep working on this and I'll get back with you. actually a little harder than I thought it would be just because of my inexperience and I don't know this is definitely dead it's starting to rot a tiny bit maybe <clears throat> you know whatever and I ripped it here and I actually ripped a couple other pieces off I tried to go super fast and it it kind of the inner bark stayed and you know whatever it just broke all right I'm gonna get maybe a little bit off of this piece and just for some later projects and then we'll get to making the container. Okay guys, with a project like this, I like to try it out several times. Um, it's been my experience, you're never going to get it the first time. Now, um, this isn't my first time making a birch bark container, first time waterproof. 
and but you know i mean i i did seem to get it it's not leaking but i mean it's just uglier than sin and it's fragile and stuff like that but now that i've messed with it a little bit i've gained some knowledge now i can take that bigger piece of birch bark and hopefully make something that you know quite a bit more functional bigger and something that would you know i could boil with so now i know it's possible i could, i knew it was possible but i've done it for myself now it's totally waterproof it's not leaking um any water that you do see coming out it's coming out from that edge probably but anyway now i know i can boil or i mean now i know it's waterproof i'm going to try to boil with it um, not this one i'm going to make a better one and all i did is just kind of pucker the corners and tie them together with this um nettle cordage and then the middle part was not uh it was not holding a container shape it was kind of wanting to go flat so i just did this with it and i might do this with it anyway with the other one because if i attach a you know a cord through a couple of these on both sides i can suspend it from a fire which is what i really want to do i don't want to have to dig you know like a keyhole fire or um I don't want to put it on top of try to put it on top of some a green stick grate or anything like that. I'd really want to suspend it over a fire. So all right, let's get going with this piece of uh, bigger bark, and I'll uh, show you the steps I'm going through. Okay, so I mean, I, as you guys can tell, I I haven't researched this project. I haven't watched anybody else really do this. A uh, long time ago, I did, but you know, I just kind of make this stuff up on the fly. A lot of it. Anyway, I've been practicing with this corner and. The way I had done it was I, you know, tried to fold two pieces, uh, the two the two sides, and then the corner would come together if this would cooperate. And I basically pinched it and then kind of folded it over. Okay, this one's not working so good because of the splits right there, but basically I folded it and then folded it again, and that was my corner. Okay. Now you see how this is ripping, okay? I originally thought maybe I could sew, you know, just take some time with this big piece and sew this here. But the more I think about it, the more I'm afraid that just the act of sewing is going to make it start to rip. If it starts to rip, then I will sew it. I may do it anyway. I don't know. I haven't decided. Anyway, um... So instead of doing that corner, what I'm thinking, just a more simple, because I'm trying to do this to where I'm not, this isn't self-sustaining living or whatever. This is survival. A lot of the stuff I, I practice is survival. If you're out there for, you know, two years, you're going to be able to figure some of this stuff out. If you're out there for three, four days, you know, you want something kind of fast and, you know, useful, not, not super pretty. I don't care how it looks as long as it works. So I'm thinking just pinching, and it's a small piece to work with. You can see where I kind of messed with this one. Anyway, I'm thinking just pinching the corner together, just like that. Okay. Try to make it a little more uniform. And with that big, well, now see, I don't think that would. Maybe it is better to bend it over like that. I'm just worried about right there where it's going to crack. All right, I'm going to mess with this a little bit more, and I'll get back with you. I asked that lady if she ever used fire or anything to help her mold her baskets, and she kind of laughed and said no, and basically you'll just catch it on fire. But I have heard other people say that fire works with it. She also kind of laughed at the fact that, some, that I asked her if they ever soak it. She kind of laughed about that too. Um, she said it's waterproof. How are you going to get any water inside of it? But, you know, I don't know. You can see it's starting to separate. It's a, it's a thicker bark. It's a good piece of bark, I think. But it's starting to separate here, which will either make it more flexible and easier to work with, or I'm going to be getting rid of some of my layers. So, I guess I'm not sure about that. I have noticed that if I put it over this fire, it does seem to make it a little more flexible. And it's so, it wants to roll up like it did, you know, like it was on the tree. So I want to try to make it go the other way just to kind of a little bit, just to make it a little more flexible. 
Let me flatten this piece out and see if it's even going to work with it starting to separate and I'll get back with you. Okay, I am going to go with more of a rounded corner. I don't want to... I don't know, that one's, that's not too bad. But I am going to kind of tuck it over a little bit, I think. I want it to be kind of a big container. If it could boil a quart of water, that would be nice, but I can see it's too small for that. But you see there, that's... And that way the weak point's maybe up there and not down here. It's a little more... Oops, you can't see that. That way the weak point's maybe a little bit more down there as opposed to right there. So that's my corner I'm going to do, I think. Put that up there a little bit. Now the tricky part, and what she did for her stuff like this is she has one of those... It's not really a paper clip, but it's one of those clips that you pinch and it's hold papers together with. I could have cut a green sapling or something and used like an old fashioned clothespin to hold it here if I wanted. Um, I'm not super worried about it. And I am going to use, um, you know, a needle here. This is a sail needle. It's about the only time I've ever found a use for it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've never had to break it out and use it as a magnet. But anyway, I could have sharpened a piece of bone or um, antler would have worked pretty good, but I didn't feel like it. <laughs> so I'm just going to work this, hopefully my finger's out of the way, which it is, of course. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to work this through there. This is nettle cordage, or nettle, not even cordage. And she actually was using basswood. I think I mentioned that. And she um, did not weave it into rope or anything like that she said that they boil it for like three days and that makes it just extremely it makes it stronger than um, the way i processed it which was just soaking it for a couple of weeks um, they have in the past you know just thrown it in a lake or a river or something and come back and got it in a few weeks or but uh, i wanted to process the cordage without any fire because if I was making cordage like that maybe I needed a bow drill fire and if I had if I needed a fire processing it with fire didn't really make a lot of sense. I need three hands for these projects sometimes. And I split the bark on the back side. As soon as I get this corner stitched I'll show you. I don't think it'll hurt it though. All right, so I'm just going to keep working at that. Okay, but you can maybe see, where did I split it at? Oh, right there. Oh, maybe you can't really see it, but anyway, I split it a tiny bit right there. That's the thing with the, it won't split this way, but it will, or I take that back. It'll split that way, but um, no, it won't split this way, but it will split across. Um, when it's grown up, it's grown up the tree like this. It'll split this way, but not this way very easy. Anyway, let me, uh, I think this is going to work out decent. Let me get this uh, corner done and I'll get back with you. Okay. Now this is far from pretty, but that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and heat it up a little bit. It seemed to help it. Now with this, I figure it's okay to use the fire because if I need a container to boil water with, before I make the container, I'm going to make damn sure I have a fire. Um, you know, or at least that's my thought. All right, let's see if that helped. Come on, you, don't you break.
There. All right, I'm gonna sew this one up. All right, you primitive skills guys are gonna laugh your butts off, but this is what I made. And you can see it's all cattywampus and lopsided and everything. If I bring these two corners together, it suddenly makes it um, right to the world or whatever. So I want to suspend this over a fire. I wouldn't mind putting, now this is woven cordage because I want it a little bit stronger or twisted together cordage. I wouldn't mind attaching four corners to make my bale system, you know, truly strong. But if I attach it to the opposite corners and if I get some water in there, I'm hoping it'll square it up like this. If not, then I'll have to tighten this tight to make it like this and then go through the other corners to make my um, my bale system. What I've done here is I just put a toggle on this side. I tied that uh, Canadian jam knot everybody seems to be talking about now. It's in Dave's new book and uh, Jamie's been talking about it quite a bit. I'm still learning it. I'm pretty new at it. I'm very new at it. I'll try to try to tie it right here. Basically it's a it's a kind of like an overhand knot with a stop knot in it or whatever. So I'm just going to put the stop knot in it and I'll probably have to tie it a couple of times because like I said I'm really new at it. But it seems like, I just tried this, if I twist it once, okay, I'm basically tying another overhand knot on the string itself. It's very similar to that splicing knot I showed in Clothing Confident number one that I mistakenly called a blood knot. I believe it's, um, geez, and a guy told me what it was called. It's a splicing knot. I don't remember if it's called a fisherman's knot or what it was, but anyway, sorry man, I know you told me, but. So that's basically it. I've got an overhand knot over the top of this cordage and this little thing here is supposed to stop it from sliding. I'm doing these toggles because I want as much surface area against that bark as possible. I don't just want like a knot or something like that on there. I'm trying to work it to the end. I mean this is all natural cordage so it doesn't exactly behave like normal stuff. Ideally that stop knot I think would be down there a little bit tighter but whatever. Okay. I'm going to try to work this through. And of course, right at the end of the my last stupid corner, the bark started to split. So I did a little sewing on it. And hopefully it'll it'll hold. I had to do a little sewing. Whoops, I had to do a little sewing there. And you notice my corner's not the same as all the rest. I don't know, man. It just didn't it just didn't seem to work out. It's you know. Alright, now if I put a little water in there like I said I hope it I hope it straightens out otherwise I will um, I'll do something tie this tight or something I might even just do that if I do that then I've got a little hanger there what the heck yeah let's do that A little too tight, I think. All right, well, I'm going to do some adjusting on this, and then I'm going to get a fire going and set up a tripod system. And I suppose I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's see if this sucker even holds water. Okay. So I'm definitely going to want to do another suspension system from the other two corners because it's obviously not um, 
it's not equally balanced. That may pose a problem. Anyway, let me do some tweaking on it, get some more tie outs on this thing and we'll get a fire going. All right, well, as you can see, I had some issues. Um, you primitive skills guys are gonna look at this and just freaking laugh, but I mean, I've never had anybody show me this before, and I'm just kind of learning on the fly. And I'm having trouble. I wanted to suspend it. I could have got two rocks and just built the fire around it, but I wanted to suspend it, and it's just not really working out for me real well. I'll show you what's happening on this other side here. Okay, the, bark, the bark is puckering right there. Right there. And that's going to leak here pretty soon. So I think I might take it back off the fire and sew that up real quick. And start over, I guess. I won't start completely over, but... It's just, it's, it's a balancing act with this stupid tripod system I've got set up and everything. I didn't think it would be like this, but, you know, it's an uneven square container, and that's just what's going on. Um, yeah. I can't decide what I want to do. I'm, I'm just going to let it see what's going on, maybe try to adjust it real quick. I want it to, I want it to rotate that way because of this but we'll see I mean that was like a whole wine bottle full of water so if I can get it to boil I'd be pretty happy let's uh, put some wood on the fire and see what happens I don't know what happened but it just sprung a leak right down there right when I started to put more wood on the fire so back to square one all right well I just tilted it away from that corner so and that seems to be pretty dang close, this flame. But you know, I need some heat there. Get this thing going. The water's steaming. Uh, it's just barely above lukewarm. All right, hopefully I won't have another leak. Okay guys, well as you can see I need to do a little more research and not just come out here and <laughs> try it, I guess. I don't know, I think you learn a lot by just trying it on your own before you get, you know, before you watch other people. Um, it's just fun to kind of try this stuff, but anyway, with that rectangle container, the bark started to really deform and I went to go try to fix it and it split on me. The water inside was actually quite warm. It was actually hot. So if this would have been a real life experience or whatever, as soon as I start to, started to see it deform um, to the point where I you know, needed to stop adding uh, heat to it, I would have just stopped, let it just sit there, let the fire go out, and then time would have been my ally there. A half hour, 45 minutes later, that water would have been drinkable, in my opinion. I think it would have been. I stuck my finger in it, and I didn't want to stick it in there for more than about two or three seconds. So that, you know, it was pretty warm. Anyway, I want to see if this dang thing will work. I want to see if I can boil water. I made another container. Okay, this time I sacrificed a live tree, 
and I really didn't see the benefit of it to be honest with you because the bark is the same if not maybe a tiny bit worse but whatever okay it's for sure what um, the containers that I've been making have been for sure waterproof uh, waterproof just not been able to um, boil in them so anyway we got a little it's this is just a tiny bit of water here okay and it's is uh, kind of a stupid way to do it but I'm gonna try it anyway because it's gonna take me a while okay this is what I'm gonna do and I can tell you already that it's gonna deform and leak out I can tell I can just see it right now this is just I guess I need to do some research. This just really isn't working out for me today. Look at that. So maybe that's why they, like that basket that I showed you before, that lady, she put like bark all the way around it to support the other bark, I guess. Fuck, I don't know.